Okay, well, my name's John Bernard Hurst. Um, I, my only claim to fame is 30 years police service, man and boy. Um, I retired eight years ago, and uh, my, my main interest is the common law, uh, uh, and I want to uphold it. And the first first uh, thing you need to do is study it. Uh, I'm gifted with a good memory. It doesn't mean I'm clever; it's a good memory. Um, my, my, my mother and my older daughter can both do the same trick on, 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 on topics they're interested in, um, and uh, I'm glad to be able to share some of the material that I've researched. And it, it, today, it's been the grand jury. Um, it was 80 years since the last grand jury was held. Um, it's a common law thing, uh, and the common law never goes away. If it's broken, it's infringed. It doesn't go away. And what we aim to do is restore it, um, feed it back into the system, and hopefully some, some, some honest judges and some on, honest lawyers will support our efforts. So that's what we've done today. Um, I've got three verdicts which I'm going to feed into the mainstream system, starting with the Old Bailey, um, and uh, 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 we'll see how it goes. Yeah, my name's uh, Ian Puddock. Um, I, for day-to-day -day work, I, I run and manage a leak detection company. And the reason I'm here, um, I've been speaking about the police state. Um, and my definition, my definition of a police state um, is when the police are not always subject to the same laws that you and I uh, would be subject to. Um, I've been talking about my new website, which is policecrimes.co.uk, which will detail all of the crimes from 1970 to now. Um, that are basically police crimes and it's this lack of accountability so the, the real issues are you know there's, there's examples of um, detective chief superintendent um, taking huge cash bribes from a cocaine gang and when he's found out he's allowed to retire early whereas if that had been you and I we'd be in prison now I wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be holding that microphone uh, whereas someone taking someone who's sworn an oath to uphold the law breaking the law in such a serious manner can retire I mean it's just it's a farce so the issue is the lack of accountability however you look at it. Um, now, my name is Robert Green and uh, I've been campaigning for the last six years uh, over the Holly Gregg uh, issue, uh, which is the case in which a um, young girl in Scotland uh, had been uh, sexually abused for many, many years and the police had refused to carry out any meaningful investigations whatsoever. My sole purpose in joining in the uh, in a way formulating the campaign, was to try and ascertain the fact that the police did do a proper investigation, given the gravity of the allegations made by a witness who was described as a truthful one and a, uh, a genuine victim. In fact, she had been paid by the Criminal Injuries Compensation Authority uh, a given award because of the veracity of what she was saying and the expert witness evidence on which she relied. And it is the expert witness evidence that is crucial on this because I'm not an expert in any of the fields. I'm not a witness to the crimes or anything like that. I've just gone on the many, many documents that have been produced by uh, medical specialists, police specialists, um, Down syndrome specialists, Holly has Down syndrome, and also, of course, the physical, psychological, psychiatric, uh, psychiatric experts as well. There's absolutely no doubt that Holly has been a victim. Holly has clearly named the people she alleges to be victims, vegetable perpetrators, and the police have done absolutely nothing about it. Nothing at all. And that is a scandal because whatever the situation, it doesn't mean that the people named necessarily are guilty. We can't say that at all. But is it wrong for the police not to carry out any meaningful investigation at all? Not checking the computers of those named, uh, not interviewing them, not looking at forensic evidence. None of that has taken place. It's not a failure of the Scottish police in this issue. In fact, um, what we have from the Police Complaints Commission report is that in fact uh, police, Grampian Police based in Aberdeen at the time actually withheld two very good supporting documents for Holly from Dr Eva Harding and Dr Jack Boyle two most eminent specialists in Scotland from the prosecutor and that was go going back uh, in 2000 uh, just after 2000 and I believe that had those documents gone into the hands of the procurator fiscal uh, at that time with the prosecutor then a different, uh, a different pattern would have emerged and it wouldn't have been necessary for me to be standing here today and conducting a campaign. One thing we have got as time has gone on we've amassed more and more evidence. The most crucial evidence of all now is that unlike almost any sexual abuse case that's alleged or genuine whatever in this particular case there's a, 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 a proper threat to a national leader in fact two national leaders in this case it's Alex Salmond leader of the Scottish National Party and his successor Nicola Sturgeon 
uh, just to tell you exactly what happened, 28th of May 2011, the Information Commissioner ruled that the Scottish uh, ministers, Alex Salmond and the ministers, of which Nicola Sturgeon was one, had all uh, breached sections 10.1 and 21.1 of the Freedom of Information Scotland Act in trying to avoid queries about the Holly Gregg case. The Scottish Government, uh, you might have imagined, would have done something about it by that time, but they still ignored the ruling. And on the 11th of July, they were given an ultimatum by the Information Commissioner stating that if they did not receive a satisfactory reply within 24 hours, the whole of the Scottish ministers would be held under criminal uh, action of contempt of court. That sounds pretty serious, and you would think that the people of Scotland would know all about that. Can you imagine here if David Cameron was in a similar situation, it would be all over the papers. In Scotland, it was not. It was suppressed. And it was suppressed mainly by Mr Salmon's own lawyer, who controlled, at the time, virtually all the press and television in Scotland, a man called Peter Watson of uh, Levy and Macrae, who has currently had a writ placed upon him by Ernst & Young uh, over a possible major international fraud. That is the, the former First Minister's uh, uh, lawyer. What is important in this at this present time is we have a, a general election coming up. Uh, there's a possible, obviously a likelihood that there will be a hung parliament, so certain parties will have some influence. And that, that influence could be exerted by the Scottish National Party. And what I would ask everybody to understand absolutely fully, without any problem at all, is that the Scottish National Party, the current leadership and the past leadership, have collaborated and conspired to block an investigation into a disabled Aberdeen girl. That is fact, and these people are hoping that the British public will trust them in some way and vote for them. All we're saying is a proper investigation of the Holly Gray case, not that people should be convicted, although the evidence is very strong, and I won't go into that too much at this stage, but it is. But it's just a question of police conducting a proper investigation and exonerating the people concerned if they're not guilty. My name's Field McConnell. I'm 65 years old from the U.S., and for the last eight years, I've been in an organization called Able Danger, which is a private intelligence agency which has displaced some of the federal agencies that cannot do their jobs. It's not that they're unwilling, but they're being suppressed from above. So some private individuals have taken over to try to resolve several things, most significantly the aviation hoaxes that have killed 1,453 people in the last eight years. I'm going to be talking about four uh, items. One is HSBC, and HSBC has now got a big break between them and their former uh, lawyers or solicitors. I'm going to be talking about Serco. Serco has, it's a corporation that many outside of England don't know about, and it used to be called the octopus. Some people would use a term like uh, agents of the new world order, but all of these organizations, regardless what you call them, are working against God, and we're working for God to protect the global commoners. Right, hello. Uh, my name is Justin Walker, and uh, I basically campaign for the restoration of the Bradbury Pound, which uh, may sound a bit weird to some people if they hear Bradbury. They may think, where on earth is Bradbury? Well, Bradbury Pound was developed by the British government in the First World War to pay for the First World War without having to go near the private central banks. In other words, it was a classic case of a government, a British government of a sovereign nation issuing and controlling its own money supply for the well-being of the British nation as a whole. Uh, and this is uh, what, what, what we're up against. Let's, let's, let's get down to this. What we're up against is an international banking cartel who are effectively controlling our money supply and the world's money supply by creating money completely out of thin air as debt and then once they've created that money out of nothing they then get us as taxpayers to pay the interest on something that never actually existed. That is the bottom line to what the, the, the world's money affairs are all about and so all this austerity and nations being plunged into debt, everything, it can be boiled down to one simple fact that sovereign nations are no longer in control of issuing and controlling the liquidity needed, the money needed, for a prosperous and successful and happy nation. Yeah, I'm John Witterick. Uh, I've got, I uh, started the website called Get Out of Debt Free. And what it is, it's basically a website which allows people to challenge their debt by actually asking some, the bank or the debt collectors some very, very simple questions. 
Uh, it wasn't my own idea. It's actually based on the work of Mary Elizabeth Croft, and it's gone from being a tiny little website with very few visitors to now getting between three and 5,000 people every day. So it's, uh, it's taking off and it's continuing to grow. Today I've just been talking about how ridiculous the current financial system is. Uh, I've actually asked the hall, has anyone here had a loan? And of course a few people put their hands up and I said, no, you haven't had a loan because the bank haven't actually got any money to lend you. And this is the big con. I was also talking about the fact that when they create money out of nothing and then charge interest, that money doesn't exist. And so there's always going to be people defaulting and they also have to actually inflate the actual financial system exponentially. So we've got this incredible amount of money just being added to and added to. And of course you can't have an exponential system in a finite world, which means the current system at some point, and I think we're getting very, very close, has got to crash. And I think we can just feel the energy in this room over this weekend. I feel so many people are getting so close in lots of different areas that it's actually getting, you know, this year, I think Field said earlier that uh, this year, he's, I think we're going to see some huge changes. And I, I think this weekend's been a fantastic catalyst towards that.